Today I'm gonna to give you five tips on making the most of your Airbnb experience from someone who's been living in Airbnbs traveling for over two years. I'm currently staying in this beautiful patio, tiny home Airbnb, Airbnb uh, with quite the view. I'm currently in uh, Moab uh, with all these other tiny house units. And I have tons and tons of experience having stayed in so many Airbnbs over the years. Um, I even uh, am working on the porch outside. I've done a separate video on this tiny home tour. So let's just get started. First tip, most Airbnbs are going to have a digital lock. Some they'll hand you a key, but for digital locks or keys, I've learned the hard way many, many times. Never leave your room or your house without at least one form of backup a key a code written down on paper there's been many times where i've walked out i forgot the door locks i don't have the code the worst time i had to uh, walk to a uh, grocery store nearby beg them to use the phone to call airbnb support it was already dark so a lot of things were already closed and the support was able to verify over the phone that i was the actual owner of the airbnb and he got me the code to get back in but uh, that's a dangerous thing and you don't want to happen so make sure you bring something some verification that you know the code memorize the code or you'll be locked out tip number two check and verify internet now sometimes they'll say oh the internet works most of the time that is true but it's always good to verify that's why i prefer staying uh in certain airbnbs and that'll be tip number three but check the internet uh once you get there check it um and then if you have a problem let them know as soon as possible uh, one time, the day before I was going to arrive, I got an email from a separate entity saying, hey, the internet in this unit you're staying isn't working. Would you like to reschedule? Um, I was very quick to answer. I was quick to verify in the messages that this was affiliated with the Airbnb host. It was, apparently it was like a separate management organization. And they were able to get me to a new room. I was able to confirm that the internet is working. Um, and that's really important for any remote workers. Maybe less important for those who are just looking to travel, but still very important. Three, if you can, stay with super hosts. Now, I've stayed with non-super hosts and just been very thorough with my review of the photos and website, and I've been totally fine. However, with super hosts, um, you just have more of a confirmation that there's no sketchy business everything's legit it's not going to be some creeper there's not going to be inconsistencies because you have to realize these are not hotel organizations where everything is consistent it's sometimes a person an actual citizen who is renting out part of their house sometimes you get a whole unit or the whole house is geared towards airbnbs uh but Sometimes it's an actual person, so you have to verify because there will be all sorts of flukes that happen when you're with the real person or just someone less experienced. So with super hosts, I've usually have no problems. Uh, with regular people though, and some super hosts, you know, you get some quirks. You know, sometimes they'll be watching TV, they're cooking with you. Uh, the check-in process is less seamless because they hand you the key. I had one time where they overslept and so I was waiting outside for them to open the door and they were about an hour and a half late. Uh, so there's just some things you need to verify. Don't feel like you're being too overbearing by just asking something like, hey, could you please make sure you're there to hand me the key? I've had an incident where someone overslept. That's making sure things go smoothly and usually they go really smooth. Um, and then number five, don't rely on the host to give you all the information. Now, usually with super hosts, they're really good. They'll send you an essay of stuff. Read it. I know there's going to be some casual young kids or teenagers or young adults who don't read all of that stuff. 
And guess what ends up happening? They miss something really important where it's like, hey, make sure you park on this side or you'll get towed and you have to pay a heavy fee. Uh, that stuff happens. I had an incident where I read the whole essay. They'll send you like an essay of a message when you, uh, when you uh, actually start day one. And they didn't mention at all on there that, uh, this was in Houston, by the way, this was in a, a neighborhood community, gated community in Houston. They didn't mention anywhere in that essay where you couldn't, couldn't park. I parked under a uh, area that had a cover for shade. There's half that were covered, half that were uncovered. I got told I had to pay 400, 500 cash out of pocket, which was very tough because I wasn't in the area. All my IDs, my ATM cards were in the car that got towed. They wouldn't let me open the car door to get it. I had to go through extraneous measures to get the cash. And Airbnb sided with the host, which is also ridiculous. Having, you know, being a super guest, someone who has been a customer and spent so, so much with Airbnb, they sided with the host who, you know, didn't tell me at all anything about the parking. There was this tiny little message at the front of the gate, which I couldn't see because 